So the reasons why the two conditions are associated with one another, why colitis and PSC are associated with each other, are unknown. Um, one of the proposed hypotheses uh, surrounds aberrant lymphocyte homing. We know that in the gut and the liver there exist distinct phenotypes on the endothelium. So the endothelium is the lining of blood vessels, that is where all your immune cells, all your lymphocytes will enter, your organs. And the signals that call specific lymphocytes to the liver and gut are, in most people, very distinct. But what we see in PSC is that some of these pathways overlap. And we see um, two particular molecules uh, sort of in the gut that are important. One is called MADCAM1 and the other one is called CCL25. And they recruit um, sort of mucosal gut lymphocytes to the gut to um, fight infection and to uh, maintain immunostasis. What we see in PSC liver is that these molecules are also expressed in the liver sinusoid, the main blood vessel uh, structures within the liver. And we see gut lymphocytes infiltrating the liver in, in PSE patients. So that hypothesis is saying that it's actually the gut that's driving the liver disease. Now that's something that has been published about 10 years ago. The one flaw or the one elephant in the room uh, regarding that hypothesis has been that the cells which we see infiltrating the liver and the cells which recruit these cells to the liver are usually found in small bowel whereas our PSE patients have large bowel disease. And but when you actually look into the literature, the majority of studies looking at large bowel disease have really looked at large bowel in the absence of inflammation, so when you don't have colitis. So what we did was we looked at colitis, not just from our PSC patients, but in our patients who have IBD alone. Um, and in those individuals, we find that these molecules that recruit immune cells, CCL25, are actually expressed in inflammation and correlate with the severity of inflammatory disease within the gut. But we don't see any CCL25 expression in patients who have no colitis so, or individuals who have no colitis. So it seems to be a very inflammatory signal. So given that these pathways are shared, um, I think certainly targeting them in PSC is an area of interest. And in terms of applying it to colitis, because we don't see it in the absence of inflammation and because they it correlates with an inflammatory sign signature such as TNF expression, endoscopic Mayo risk score, um, that's uh, sort of what I was inferring as, uh, as a potential therapeutic interest in, in colitis patients. Um, so my main interest is particular liver disease and the IBD patients that I see have mainly um, bowel disease associated with their liver injury. Um, but certainly in our PSE population it's, it's well known that individuals who have large bowel disease have a 30% cancer risk over one's lifetime. And we certainly advocate performing a colonoscopy every year uh, to survey for the presence of pre-neoplastic lesions or, le or, sort of, or, or lesions that sort of um, have actually developed into carcinoma in situ um, that can be treated early because the risk is so high. So certainly in that particular group. Um, the type of research that I'm involved in is very uh, sort of translational, is very in its embryonic stages, but certainly if CCL25 is validated as a pro-inflammatory signature, um, then seeing how that correlates uh, with clinical symptoms or whether it can proceed to clinical symptoms such as flares and disease is something that's yet to be explored. So the main thing, and um, I'm slightly biased because it's my area of interest, but the main thing is, is how to better stratify risk in our patients with autoimmune cholestatic liver disease. Um, we have very good tools for stratifying risk in primary biliary cirrhosis, PBC, and, and some of my previous, uh, previously published research has, has uh, delved in that area. But in PSC, it's really a black box, and that's sort of one of the sort of great professors of modern hepatology, Michael Manns, has used that statement. It is really the black box. And I think... What I would like to see is a better modus for, for, for identifying which patients are going to do well, in which case you don't need to think about escalating therapy, but you just see them perhaps once a year and monitor their colitis, and which patients are likely to develop rapidly progressive disease and hence should be approached for emerging clinical trials, of which there are now a high degree of activity on the horizon, um, some of which target is, targets these gut lymphocyte homing pathways to the liver. I mean, I think certainly if you've got any uh, sort of individuals with PSC, uh, sort of uh, particularly in the context of inflammatory bowel disease, then sort of do get in contact. We're always looking to sort of for new research opportunities and individuals who are, who are willing to participate.